The credit crisis is pounding small businesses. Small firms employ about 40% of the nation's workforce, and lately many of them are unable to find loans to meet payroll or fund expansion. Greg Clarkin takes a look at how some are coping in the face of the credit freeze. After almost two decades of owning a successful nursery school in New York's Westchester County and building a solid financial track record, Carol Conley is the last person you'd expect to be hit by the global credit crisis. But the freezing of the credit markets hit home when Conley tried to line up financing to pay construction costs as she expanded the school into a new building. We went to our local banks, which we have a great uh, relationship with for the last uh, 18 years. And no one in the bank thought it was going to be a problem until uh, a couple of weeks later when um, we got a decline notice. And that should have really been, um, you know, our first sign that something was, was not right. That something was the credit market. Banks had essentially stopped lending, even to established small business owners. Conley went to other banks, all with the same result. With the help of the New York State Small Business Development Center, she eventually lined up the financing. The problem has become even worse in the last few weeks, as working capital, the lifeblood of small businesses, has dried up. For some businesses, it's gotten pretty dire, um, particularly folks that may have, let's say, a seasonal cash flow, uh, where they need to borrow at one point during the year. They do a bulk of their business in, in three months, six months, seven months of the year. Um, if they can't borrow, they're stuck. It's estimated there are 27 million small businesses in the U.S., companies that employ less than 500 people and account for about half of the economy's output. And the lockdown in lending has hit those looking to buy a business especially hard. Ronnie Jagoda has been trying to buy a small delicatessen. He's a former restaurant owner, and he's willing to put down as much as a third of the purchase price, but the banks are still turning him down. They are just saying no. We can't lend right now, and I've tried to reduce scenarios with this one bank that is very prominent in the uh, East Coast. And, you know, I told them, I'll put this up, I'll reduce the amount, I'll come up with more money, what, you know, whatever I can do to get my foot in this door, even if I have to do renovations at another time. And no. There's a growing fear that so long as working capital is either unavailable or increasingly difficult to get, Small business owners may be forced to cut jobs and in some cases shut down, causing even more damage to an already fragile economy. Greg Clark in Business Week TV, New York. Consumer credit is a big problem as well. Banks are holding on to their money with tight fists, and that has big implications for borrowers, everyone from college students on up to corporate CEOs. Business Week's personal finance editor, Lauren Young, joining us now with some answers to all of this. Good to have you back. Nice to see you, Jill. Let's first touch on student loans, because that's a big concern out there. Some of the uh, lenders are pulling back on funding some of those federal loans and even some of the private lenders drying up. And it's a huge problem right now because obviously school has started and some people are already counting on money for springtime and they're scrambling because they're not sure if they're going to get it. And not only that, but the private loans, because there's been such a pullback, you have to have stellar credit. You have to have the best credit and you're probably going to be paying more for those loans. So what is the credit score now for virtually every type of loan? Right, and really everything, it all comes down to your credit score. The golden score right now is above 700 out of 850. Now, a year or so ago, it was much lower, it was in the 600 range. And if you're below 620, you are subprime. You are not good. And the average credit score is something like 680. So right. you so really have some groundwork to cover. In all of these cases that we're going to talk about, the whole thing you need to do, focus on right now is getting your credit score up because that's going to get you the best interest rates. Okay. And what about car loans? I mean, we're actually seeing some lower rates on some of the used cars, which is very hard to get. Impossible. I mean, I wouldn't say impossible, but financing last year, 80% plus of all auto loans were approved. This year, we're at 63%. And, and the interest rates are going up in some areas, and it's Detroit is on lockdown right now. They cannot get financing through. So unless you're, again, that stellar credit score above 700, you're not getting a car. And mortgages, including those jumbo mortgages. Okay, now jumbo mortgages are in a whole other world, and jumbo mortgages are usually mortgages above 400,000, and in metropolitan markets can be much higher. It can be six, 700,000. The rates on those mortgages have gone up. Their banks have stopped lending. They're really nervous. Again, they only want to give to the people who have the best credit score, who can put at least 20% down, and in some cases more, as much cash as, cash as possible. And for people who have smaller mortgages, the first-time home buyers and whatnot, 
they are having a really hard time getting financing too right now. As you said, the fists are tight. There's just not a lot of money being lent right now. Okay, one quick question here. Um, small businesses, we know they're having a tough time getting loans, but also some of the larger corporations are, and that could really affect payroll. Right, because if commercial paper, which is the market where companies go to do short-term financing, that helps fund all sorts of things from keeping the lights on and paying people's salaries. If they can't tap that money, they have to look for alternative sources of funding. So there's a whole domino effect. I mean, it's really felt down at the smallest level, but also, you know, in the corner offices all across the country. That's great. Thank you so much, Lauren. Some good tips there. All right, and for more on this financial crisis, you can pick up a copy of this week's Business Week magazine.